This next demonstration I use when I'm teaching my students about heating curves, and we're going to do some experiments that involve calorimetry, so they're going to have to be able to measure the amount of energy exchanged, and we're eventually going to measure the heat of fusion using ice cubes. But as an introduction, I really like this demonstration. So I point out to the kids that they have a heating curve for a substance, and they can identify the solid, the liquid, and the gas areas on here. And they notice that when the temperature doesn't change, we have a phase change occurring. So that during a phase change, the temperature remains the same. Well, what's going on during a phase change? We're still adding energy at a uniform rate, but all the energy we're adding is going to pull those molecules apart. If we're talking about water, we have to break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. When we go from a solid to a liquid, we break them up enough that they can flow over each other. But when we're going from a liquid to a gas, we always notice that this takes more energy because we have to break all of the bonds that are between the, the particles, all those intermolecular forces. We're not breaking chemical bonds. The molecule remains the same, and that's a common misconception students have, that when the bubbles, when you boil water, have hydrogen or oxygen in them. No, those bubbles are water vapor. Okay, so, but I point out to my students that this portion is a lot longer because it takes, you have more intermolecular forces that you're breaking, okay? So what we're gonna do is measure how much energy does it actually take when we're boiling water? How, how many, you know, how much energy do you have to put in to pull apart the water molecules from the liquid arrangement into the gas arrangement? And we're gonna start out with five grams of water, which I've measured is five milliliters, and let me put my goggles on. We're gonna use another beaker with 100 grams of water. Now, I, I could use a volunteer. Peg, oh please, a random volunteer. My teammate is coming now. <laughs> All right. All right, we've got the 100 grams and the 5 grams. What we're going to do, what I need you for, is I want to know just how much energy it takes to separate those water molecules. So once it starts boiling, you have to tell me that it started boiling, and then you need to watch it until all the water is gone. Okay. Because once it's boiling, it should be at 100 degrees, the boiling point of water, and the temperature won't change again until all that water is vaporized. All right? Okay. And I will read the thermometer, and together we will do this. Okay. All right. And if you could just put that on there. Are we okay in terms of watching the monitor? Okay. How about this way? And... Until it starts boiling, you don't have to do anything. I see little bubbles, but not well, boiling. Wait. Oh, up. Oh. All right, I tell me. I think it's boiling, Annis. Okay, 27.7. And then I wait until all of the water is gone. All of the water. Including the drops on the side of the beaker? That would be good, okay. although you may not be able to do that. That would be one. difficult. That would be difficult. Boy, this gets hot when you hold your hand over the hot plate. Stand off to the side a little. Still boiling. Isn't there anything more exciting than watching water boil? So this isn't one of those demos that are exciting, but while I'm doing it, the students should be thinking about, how am I going to do this calculation? Exactly what is she doing? So the whole point of this is for them to think through, how am I going to measure that heat of vaporization, which is 
what, it, what we're measuring is the amount of energy needed to go from the liquid to the gas. I think it's getting close. I still see quite a bit. Yeah, from the side, I... Okay. Closer. Hmm. And we're almost there. No, not quite. Last little bit and done. Okay, I've got 56 degrees Celsius. Let's turn the hot plate off quickly. Let's turn the hot plate off. <laughs> okay. One of the assumptions that we're making in this lab is that we're getting uniform heating on, on the hot plate. And we're assuming that the beakers are absolutely identical. They will transfer energy to the water at the same rate. So that would mean that the thickness of the beaker would have to be the same, right? And, the, and they're flat, so they're touching the thing. So we're making a lot of assumptions here. And it doesn't really matter if you get the best data in the world on it, because the thinking is what I want the kids to go through. But let's see how good we did on this anyway. There is an accepted value for this, and we'll compare what we did to the accepted value. Okay, in order to measure, I need to use Q equals MC delta T. So I tell the kids this is the amount of energy gained or lost times the mass times the specific heat capacity. and times the difference in temperature, the final minus the initial temperature. So doing a little bit of math here, I've got 50, I've got 56 minus 27.7, and I've got a temperature change here of 28.3 degrees Celsius. All right. Now, they both gained the same amount of heat, so I can use that 100 grams of water to measure the energy that the 5 grams gained. So I had 100 grams, we'll just say it to two significant figures, and the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and we have a temperature change here of 28.3 degrees Celsius, and we're going to get times 100, times 4.18, I get 11829. Don't worry about my sig figs because I don't, and this is in joules because I've got grams, degrees Celsius, but that was per 5 grams of water, right? So if I divide that by 5, I get a value here of 23.7 joules per gram. Okay, 23.70 joules per gram. And how did I do? Well, I was trying to find a book that had it in joules because I remembered it back in calories, but it's 40.7 joules per mole. So if we multiply that by one mole per 18 grams, I'm going to get an accepted value here of 2260 joules per gram. And that is the accepted value. So my percent error 
is the difference between what I got and what I should have gotten divided by what I should have got. So, okay. 2370 20, minus 2260 divided by 2260. And I've got an error here of about 4.9%, which isn't bad because of the assumptions that we've made. The hot plate, rarely would you expect to get absolutely even heating on it. And likewise, the beakers are bound to have some imperfections. Really the biggest problem too, if you, ha if you have the students do it, they have trouble reading the thermometer to a tenth of degree. So they have a tendency to, you know, it's, it's a half a degree or it's a full degree difference. But the point on this is sometimes you do the calculation just so that they mentally go through the process and they go, oh, and this is followed, in my class, I would have had them discover the heat of fusion of ice. And that's a great lab. So that's how I use this demonstration. Thank you.